Chad Trevo. And I'm Dooner. And we're coming to you in Chicago, November 12th through 13th at the McCormick Center. At Freight Waves Live, and we're bringing our podcast, What the Truck? The Deep Dish Pizza of Freight. Go to FreightWaves.com and get your tickets now. I think, are we, we're good. We're a little bit earlier because you got a flight to catch in a little bit. You're going to Chicago. Yeah, thanks for the adjustment. Talk about getting uh, held up, though. <laughs> the Sneaky, the best grocery store in Tennessee or Chattanooga, at least, is the Walmart that's near you. Yeah. At the bottom of that hill. I know. It's surprisingly really good, but the problem is. The prices are great. You can't beat them. <laughs> and they have great produce, and it's always fresh, and they have these like delicious green tomatoes that I get all the time, and yeah. they even cater to, to the veganism. <laughs> but I got to say, the one thing is the grocery lines take forever there. I know. Like, it, it, it's, it's I, I don't know the answer, but you'll 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 shop there for 20 minutes, and then you'll stand in line for 20 minutes. That's how long I was in line. I've been timing it. And I think my average wait time, at, like four times way. I've been doing it now, is like 22 minutes. That is Horrible. Is the answer though? Like, do you try to go through the self checkout because those have gotten that's slow better. too? Though, like the people, if you have like a whole thing, like oh, we get like two hundred and fifty dollars yeah. worth of groceries. Oh, that's hard. And then like the checkout guy, he's like, "Man, a yam's another name for a sweet potato." And he's like, <laughs> "You sure like bananas? I need to eat more fruit." I think it's just they get really chatty about all this stuff. Wow. Uh, yeah, but remember how the the self checkout lines it used to be where like you would take it and you would try and you would they you, if you didn't put it in the bag then it yeah. would refuse to accept. Oh, if it, it wasn't the right weight or something like, and they didn't have that calibrated. Man, properly. they got. I mean, they got to get that better, man. Yep, got to automate the whole thing. Wow, Steve, uh, Steve, Steve, Steve Luptikin, He's already written in. He said more cowbell. Thanks, Steve. Uh, okay. All right. Let's do all it. Right. Yeah. There you go, Steve. A little bit more for you. If you're out there, you know, give us requests. We're taking requests on the line. Right now, share this with the people. Oh, the other thing, the other thing is like, so when I, right before, when I was podcasting, right, but I was just doing consulting, I went to this one place I was hiring for a marketing job, and it turned out, yeah. like, on my interview, they took me to a Walmart to sell Verizon, and they're like, yeah, you're your own business owner. And I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm just like a, I'm just a J.O. standing in the middle of a Walmart trying to sell Verizon. Now, whenever I see those people, I'm like, they must work for one of these, like, fly-by-night companies that, like, lures people in saying they're marketing, and, like, the real goal is to uh-huh. get you... To like bring in other people, so you're the manager and you're not really selling. So it's like a, it's like a pyramid scheme. Sounds like it. So you just did you see something that reminded you of that? Well, our Walmart the, here has oh, all those people there, oh, and they were really aggressive. They're like, "Hey, super dad, do you want to get some Verizon?" I'm like, yeah. "No, I got that EPB. Well, I got the gig." Yeah, it sounds like a tough market with EPB being as great as it is. Uh, we got a packed show today. What, what do we have going on? We have um, we have a bunch of news. We got the we we got uh, more trick than treat for price fixing three PLs. We got ghoulish armed dealers, the congested streets of the Big Apple. Yeah, we're going to is... be joined uh, by Zach Strickland for Strickland Business. His first time doing that segment. Uh, Carrie White's going to come in. She deals with a lot of like our mobility things like that. We're going to talk about Kari White. Kari yeah. White, yeah, yeah. Kari yeah. Warriors. Um. And Talk about DoorDash a little big bit. Big deal, little big deal. deal little Emily deal. Emily Zink coming on. So it's going to be a great show. House. We're leading up to our Halloween yeah. edition. I mean, because, uh, yeah, I mean, Halloween happens. We don't get to do one on Halloween. Right. The day, only the day after. But I guess before we jump into the headlines, yeah. why don't we pay some bills? Triumph Pay is the leading carrier. <laughs> Sorry, Triumph Pay. I'll say this more. <laughs> Triumph Pay is the leading carrier payment platform in transportation. With over 50,000 carriers paid, Triumph Pay helps to drive capacity, efficiency, and cash flow for brokers, shippers, and more. Visit TriumphPay.com to learn all about it. All right. Hit the music. Man. Third man, third Freight 40 executive pleads guilty in U.S. price-fixing investigation. This was Francis Alvarez this time. He was operating a forwarding service in Houston. We were there just a few months ago in that big... um. That big, uh, what was that? Like a cruise ship, but also <laughs> it was like a landlocked. It was a convention ship. center, but it yeah. looked like a cruise ship. Yeah, uh, the the theme. Well, yeah. this guy, he's not getting to go to the cruise ship. He's going to the big house. He faces oh. a maximum of ten years in prison and a million dollar fine for violating 
the Sherman Act, something I was unfamiliar with. Yeah. Alvarez well, not knowing the law is no excuse, Dooner. Well, I know that, but I've never, vi- maybe I have violated the Sherman Act. <laughs> uh, Alvarez pled guilty in South Florida District Court on October 25th to a charge of price fixing, the U.S. Justice Department said. According to court documents, Alvarez participated in a multi forwarding scheme from early September 2010 to August 2014 to increase, fix, stabilize, and maintain prices charged to household goods shipments. Sent to Honduras. That's, I used very, to a, that's very specific. I think that rules you out. I know. I used to have a Honduran pen pal when I was in sixth grade in social that, studies. That's about as close as you ever got to violating the Sherman Act. Yeah. Okay. That's a relief. Well, yeah, the Assistant Attorney General Macon Del, 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 Del Rahim of the Justice Department's Antitrust Division said in a statement, Alvarez and her co-conspirators cheated American consumers shipping goods to Honduras by conspiring to raise prices and pocket the proceeds of their illegal scheme. Ill gotten gains. Under the Sherman Act, a convention, a conviction for price fixing carries a ma- well, we just said it a maximum yeah. ten year sentence and dollar fine. dollar fine. Yeah, November twenty eighteenth, New Orleans based dip shipping executives Roberto Dip and uh, Jason Handel pled guilty in South Florida District Court for their role and were sentenced in 2019 to 18 months and 15 months in prison, respectively. Dip and, ship. Yep, dip shipping also pled guilty to an antitrust violation charge and paid a $488,000 criminal fine. I'm not sure how much of a hit that is to their bottom line, but here's one. Nikki Adelman, she said um, yeah. she's she's contesting. She said she has found that the Walmart by us also has better produce than the grocery stores. We agree their, their grocery supply chain is being great. Yeah. She says there are other food stores, though, and the prices are better, which, you know, there may be. Well, I'd be surprised to find out. Yeah. It's certainly not Whole Foods or Publix. Big uh, money. This is a grocery store bill, right? Yeah. Uh, Prologis to acquire Liberty Property Trust. Uh, logistics real estate and supply chain logistics firm Prologis will acquire Liberty Property Trust in an all-stock transaction worth approximately $12.6 billion, both companies announced on October 27th. The boards of both companies unanimously approved the transaction, which will also include the assumption of Liberty's debt. The transaction is expected to close in the first quarter of 2020 and is subject to the approval of Liberty stakeholders. Yeah, warehouse game is getting deeper and deeper, and uh, industrial property yeah. space is changing a lot, too. Um, there's, a, there's a podcast that's coming out at the end of the week for Freight sake with Craig Fuller and John Bradford, but they were talking about this story, and they're talking about how the... And this is just a little teaser. They're talking about how warehouse space used to be in the seediest part of town, but now that we have to get so quick to consumers, real estate is starting to come at a premium, or warehouse real estate is starting to come at a premium. Oh, yeah. A Canadian man who ran a cross border This is my favorite story that I read this morning. I always do the news updates, the morning minute, and this was my favorite one I read. It was a Canadian man who ran a cross-border gun-running scheme, <laughs> was foiled by a librarian. He now won't be able to export or import anything. From the U.S. for seven years, this was Canadian national Alexis Vlachos, who began serving his four-year prison term last September after being found guilty by a federal court in Vermont of smuggling handguns into Canada. Not good. Foiled again. The uh, Montreal resident worked with co-conspirators Annette Wexler yeah. and James or Jaime Ruiz mm. in the in the U.S. to legally purchase handguns from various Florida gun dealers. The meeting place to turn over the handguns to Vlachos was inside a restroom at the Haskell Free <laughs> Library yeah. in Derby Line, Vermont. Now, the, no now, joke. I've been by I, there. I've been by there. Is, a company I worked for did a lot of wow. cross border A and Daringer, oh, and they have away a from Derby the Line, border. Vermont. Yeah, yeah. Little did I know what went on in the bathrooms at the uh, <laughs> the the Derby Line. Maybe library. around this time too, because on two occasions in March and April 2011, the trio hid at least Ooh. 104 no, that handguns. Was, that was when I was there. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Oh, wait, no, that was 2013. Oh, well, they hit at least 104 handguns inside backpacks that Wexler and Ruiz dropped off in the library's restroom and Vlachos retrieved. Mm, that'll uh, drop the, uh, the the sack trick. Like, you do that in high school, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. Well, a librarian got the drop on him, though. The scheme was detected by this, uh, this the librarian slash superhero. She told CBC News in 2017... At the time of Latcher's trial, that these people from the outside stood out, and they were just noted. They were noticed, right? They were they were just acting sketchy. I want the movie rights to this one though, because I don't think that there's enough librarian heroes out there. Yeah, that 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 would be great. We should do a whole. There should be a whole series on it. I yeah. think. Uh, Amazon offering big shippers customized ground delivery services at low rates. 
Amazon.com is offering customized ground parcel delivery services for its select high volume shippers at rates as low as three dollars per parcel for wow. shipments weighing up to fifty pounds, Dooner. Yeah, and traveling significant lengths of haul, according. To a, per a person familiar with the program, the business-to-consumer program is by invitation only, and according to Amazon, which confirmed the program's existence, is not new. It has been rolled out in New York, Chicago, and Los Angeles, and may be available elsewhere. You know what, and this is just after we did the Amazon's earnings. You weren't here to play earnings over under, but the game still went on. And it in the Thank Amazon's you. earnings, it was like they spent, I think it was $2.6 billion on shipping. And it hurt their bottom line, though, and their stock was under. And oh. I don't know. This isn't going to help, but it's going to definitely pick up share because that seems like an amazing deal. And it says rates will vary depending on each shipper's profile. The person who has, a, according to the invitation sent to shippers, the $3 a box applies to one to three pound parcels moving over a short distance. If you want the 50 pound deal, it's got to be going over a longer distance so they can do some um, consolidations. Pickup times can vary. Yeah, well, uh, and under the service, Amazon picks up parcels Monday through Friday and delivers them seven days a week. Amazon selects the delivery provider. Customer offerings have shown a $10 per pickup charge for pickups of less than 50 parcels. Amazon disputes that, stating there is no pickup charge at all. Mm, well, this ties into what's trending in supply chain, doesn't yeah, it? Speaking of speaking of last mile. <laughs> What is trending in supply chain? Well, Dooner, we have a developing situation when mm. it comes to the last mile. The internet is real. Yeah. Shocker, yeah. <laughs> and it's bringing chaos to our The streets. internet is leaking. That's what they yeah. say when the internet like comes out in, in real life. Uh, yeah, and so it's leaking onto the streets of New York City. They have got a package problem. And to me, the part, the, the part of this is that's the developing situation is that, you know, we're only scratching the surface of how much online retail we could be using. I think it only comprises about 10% of retail transactions, but people are liking it more than more. There's about 1.5. There's There was this new report out today. Uh, there's 1.5 million packages yeah. delivered in New York every single day. So you can imagine, like, like uh, volumes have tripled over the past decade, more than tripled. Um, at these, like, in downtown parts of areas, like trucks and, and traffic just goes at a jogger's pace. It's down about 23% in speed. Wow. Well, Lots Amazon has of problems. Amazon has really killed, like, ever since I got Prime, it really killed the idea of doing your own, like, personal consolidations and, like, filling up a basket and waiting until you got, like, $25 worth of goods. Now I just buy anything when I need it, and I just click yeah. buy it now, and it just shows up. And now they're delivering, like, in, in the same day in dense cities like New York and building out density, they'll bring you that, that deodorant. <laughs> Right? That's what they're saying. Well, uh, whatever it is, I mean, you're right. It's true. That's a good point. I hadn't thought about it. There's no punishment. There isn't any incentive to build your cart up to $25. Yeah. You know, so, uh, well, so uh, cit yeah, cities are experimenting with enforcement and some creative curb management initiatives to address the growing challenge. Yeah. But, like, you know, I, I, there's been tens of millions in fines uh, which you would think, oh, that's making the company, I mean, making the, the, city, city, money? the city a lot of money. But mm. then you showed me an article mm -hmm. saying how the cities are incentivizing a lot of the major companies and like giving them breaks on tickets. So they're costing them tens of millions by yeah. contrast. Q, uh, M. Night Shyamalan, what a twist. But there is this thing <laughs> called the stipulated fine program, stipulated fine program that yeah. reduces parking, ticket fees, and costs taxpayer millions. A truck. So here's an example. A truck double parking ticket costs $115 for truck companies that don't participate in the program. But companies in the program, it's only $35 million. But the other problem is that a lot of these fines for the top 12 biggest companies, they get zeroed out. And in 2017, Streets Blog did the math. And yeah. They said it lost New York over $23 million. And, and there have been tens of millions in fines. So I don't know how you, you know, was it just, well, was it lost because, well, it wasn't. Fifty million that they they got in parking tickets. It was only 
25 or 30 million. Yeah. I mean, we can think about it in a lot of different ways. Apparently, they're not going to do as much of that forgiveness in the future. But that's okay to not forgive parking tickets as much is one thing. But th- what is going to be the solution here? I know that I know that there's a lot of warehouses. Be you, you mentioned that earlier in the show already. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of those. They're increasingly being built in all kinds of cities. We've reported on a little bit of that with off the supply chain. But like, what is, I just, there's only so much trap. There's only so many surface roads. Is it drones to the rescue, Dooner? I mean, what's, what, what? I, I mean, I don't know, but but talking like what I also found interesting was who were the beneficiaries of some of this zeroing out. You know, UPS they saved uh, twelve point four million dollars in zeroed out tickets. Then they also had Federal Express at four point six million. Yeah, well, it's the in. places doing all the all the deliveries. Verizon and Verizon it. Corporate Services; those are people, probably people doing like cable installs and stuff. They saved two point five million. Time Warner saved one point six million. Yeah, all that money in politics. I think the real answer is like you got to take the money out of politics. I don't want to get too political. That's bipartisan enough, right? Take the money out of politics. <laughs> <laughs> out of the well, I think it, it, there was a time, perhaps a few years ago, before the, the explosion happened with the, the density of the last mile stuff, where they were like, you know what, they're they're trying to, you know, we like the economy, we like it humming, we're gonna try to incentivize these companies to 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 make all this happen. Now it's becoming a problem. Well, it comes you know? just as the gig economy, and we're gonna have one of our mobility reporters, Carrie White, in here, yeah. Carrie White, in here in a little bit, and she'll talk about that, but. You're right. The, it, 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 that on top of everything. That else? on top of everything is with the the lift and the lift, lift the lift and the Uber drivers getting in the way. Um, interesting stuff. I don't necessarily have a solution for it, and it's obvious that people are just going to order more. I mean, <laughs> what what do you do in the meantime? I guess you got to put more prologues. Got to put more warehouses downtown. It, it brings us back to infrastructure, but I don't know what kind of infrastructure it would be. How is drone? How are drones going to look anyway? Like when, when they're just when they're just swarming over a place like New York, you'd imagine there'd have to be tons of them. Yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, here's our. That'll man. be exciting. It'll be like Gotham City. Here we are Maybe with Zach, Zach Strickland. Strickland. Oh yeah. I love it. You know why? You know why that's it. perfect? <laughs> because it's Yacht Rock. Woo! You're all about Yacht Rock here, aren't you? I don't. This isn't the Yacht Rock I grew up with. <laughs> yeah, Strickland so, business, brand new yes. segment. We're gonna talk about. You always do this like chart of the week. You do this great sonar breakdown. Over the weekend, I, I like how you do what I often try to do is bring real world things that people understand and and see how that relates to data, because I think that's kind of like what opens people's mind up. Yeah, no, it's a lot of, uh, you know, I try to translate it into something that anybody can understand. You know, yeah. it's not just like specific to the transportation industry or something like that, because I myself, it took a while for me to learn all the lingo. Yeah, it's it kind re- of esoteric, it's, right? It's really quite a process that you have to go through each and every week. I'm sure that some weeks you're like, I, I just don't. <laughs> No, <laughs> what I'm going, but you, this is overall, if I'm correct here, you use our sonar data platform. You look at where volumes are. You look at where that, wherever you're grabbing and looking at, and you have to put together a, some kind of, you have to construct a kind of an original thesis based upon the data you're seeing. I mean, tell us a little bit about that process. How does it work for you? Yeah, that's exactly right. I basically enter in completely dry. And I go into the platform, and obviously I have to live in Sonar for quite a bit of my day. Anyway, so I interact with a lot of different people, a lot of much smarter people than me yeah. uh, in, in the space as well. That you know, There's all this interaction and these ideas that are flowing around me. And then again, we have this huge editorial presence. Uh, yeah. so. so you're getting little bits. So that's you'll 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 know where to go. Chad, Chad, we got to stop though because I want to talk about oh. Halloween candy. Like oh. he was talking about here, we had you in before, and it's almost Halloween. We're getting there. All right, but it's almost <laughs> getting Halloween. there. I know. I just don't have the patience. I want to talk about Halloween candy because remember you were on. He was on. You went to that candy conference in Nashville. I did, and you came on. You told us all about it, and we were surprised to learn that candy. If you guys don't know this, it moves by what? It moves by truck. Reef, reefer truck, yeah, right? Reefer yeah. truck. You, because, most people, it makes sense. Yeah, the chocolate melts. Yeah. <laughs> so you use that to relate to the reefer market. So what is going on in the reefer market? So we noticed that reefer volumes are actually on the decline for the majority of the year. Uh, since about April or May, uh, our reefer tender volume index has been performing well under last year by 3 to 5% roughly. Uh, even in June, it was way under. It, was, it got as far as like 7% under last year's volumes. And there's a lot of reasons for that. There, there could be tons of reasons for this. One of them is the fact that since we're in a deflationary market for rates, uh, a lot of these shippers are taking the chance. Instead of paying that premium for the reefer freight, which 
does cost a good bit more and can cost significantly more yeah. at different times of the year. Yeah. Like uh, when produce shipments are really popping, that's really high paying freight. So a lot of these carriers will go and divert their attention. So if they don't show up, I mean, the shippers basically are saying, we're going to take a chance. We'll move the freight either in a cooler time of day overnight. They see that the weather pattern has shifted or something like that. And they'll say, let's, uh, let's give it a shot on a dry van and see if the product makes it. And a lot of times it works out. A lot of times. Yeah. Is that what happens when you open, like, candy and it's, it's, like, all stuck together or something? Is this when they cheaped out and didn't get the reefer truck? Oh, uh, it could be. but could no, be. It, it's, a lot of things. There's a lot of space between the uh, the shipper and the uh, consignee there. Now, a few months ago, didn't you go to a a candy supply the, chain the conference? The confectionery mm. uh, convention. This, uh, so it was basically, a, it was really impressive to me. Yeah. Uh, because the shippers and the carriers, there was very, I mean, they were a tight group of people. Like normally the shipper and carrier are at odds or they're, you know, at least they butt heads a little bit. These guys get together. They have, they express their opinions on what they're seeing, their struggles are. Yeah. And yeah. they get together and they say, listen, you guys are committed to us. We're committed to you. We want to provide the best service possible, but you have to like, and then the shippers are also like, we get it. You're going through difficult times. We don't want to hurt you too bad because we need you. <laughs> yeah, you know, so when I was doing reefer, I, I dealt a lot with the reefer when I was working FDA perishable fish shipments. And in Boston, there was only a couple of reefer carriers and, and only a few that specialized in moving fish. So the, the, the shippers themselves, these fisheries, they couldn't really do what a lot of shippers do to carriers, which is just, you know, act kind of disrespectful or not like sure. shippers of choice. They would have to come to resolutions on things if there were problems. And there's a lot more forgiveness because a lot of times you would see like, there's one place called North Coast. It's like a North Coast box be dropped off at Stavis. And they're big competitors in the fishing world, but they understand that this happens and none of them really put their carriers at fault. Because again, there's like two that service it. Exactly. So you're, 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 there's nothing you can do. Well, well they, but they it can't... sounds like your thesis for this week is is contradicting maybe some of the to an extent because maybe they're going with the cheaper rates. That... Been, it looks like they that that's part of it. But we're also seeing a lot of declines in food production as well. Um, there's, there's, uh, we had the, a lot of rain over the spring and late winter really impacted a lot of the harvests. Yeah. Um, so that stuff is actually, we're, we're seeing some declines there. The trade war has yeah. had its own impact because that's a $20 billion, uh, segment of that industry. A lot of it just goes straight into some sort of storage facility or gets destroyed if it doesn't go over to China. Does this mean there's going to be less candy when kids go trick or treat? No, it doesn't, right? Like no. the candy's still there and it's still there in the stores. Absolutely. No, it's still there. It just means that it might've gotten there a different way this year. Yeah. Uh, is I, the cost getting passed on to consumers? Most of the transport the transportation cost is significantly lower for candy. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. you're you're talking about maybe two to three percent of the total cost. Yeah, what kind of candy do you give out on Halloween, or do you like turn the lights off and just like hide in the house and <laughs> pretend you're not home? Well, I don't give out the ones that I've already eaten, right? Oh. So like the Butterfingers, th those don't usually make it. Oh, they don't make it. <laughs> no, um, the kids usually kill the Skittles before yeah. they have a chance to make distribution to the neighborhood. It's just like three musketeers yeah. that are left. And <laughs> what about you? <laughs> what, what, what about you? I. I usually get my like my own private stash of candy. I was actually in Walgreens the other day, and a lot of candy was already on sale, especially like the Harbio. Yeah, um, it is. Like they have these sour gummy bats that are just really Yum. good. So I stocked <laughs> up on the sour gummy bats. They're uh, they're they're delicious. What about you, Zach? You uh, do you go trick or treating with the kids, or are you the guy who stays home and gives out the candy? No, no, no. I go. I get on the road and uh, we pound the dirt, man. We oh, we wow. head door to door. You go to like multiple do, neighborhoods. Do you leave no, anything no, no, no. out on the porch or anything? Uh, our neighborhood has so much going on in it that we literally will, I just go until my kids fill up their stuff yeah, yeah. or get worn out, number one. Uh, and then we go back and my daughter actually loves handing it out. So we have plenty of time left in the evening and the kids still come around and we, we get cleared out. You wear a costume? I don't. Oh. Yeah. I have the past few years. I might not this year, but I've been a skeleton, a ninja turtle, and uh, Han Solo. With That'd be great. Kids. I've got I've got a Mad Hatter hat. <laughs> I wish I were that dedicated. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else going on in there, or how can people find your article? You should yeah, get a turban to be to be a sultan because you're a sultan. The sultan. Yeah. Well, I, I, I play one I on TV. Well. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe not the right time of year. Um. So, yeah, I write this chart of the week every week. Uh, it's completely data driven, data sourced. Uh, I try to translate it into layman's terms for anybody to read. Just you know, it's I try to make it as informative as possible to yeah. anybody that's interested in it. And. Yeah. Uh, 
you know, I learned something through the process as well. So I think that's... It is, it's dense. It's it's full of information, but it's mm. very it's very readable and very interesting. Yeah, I Good hope it's job relatable. It. Yeah. So it's... Like a pound cake. Yeah. The <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Well, thank you for joining us today, yeah. Zach. Thanks for Thanks, coming guys. to the studio. Thanks. Awesome. Yeah. You still doing Freightways now? Catch them on Freightways. Are you still Strickland doing Friday and Monday? Friday and Mondays on Freightways Friday, now. And then, of course, I do This Week in Sonar with Craig. For, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Of course. And uh, upcoming, I might have another uh, interaction on there. Yeah. So you'll wow. have to stay tuned for that. I might make you do a podcast, too, as we yeah. grow this podcast now. Podcast. Strickland and, yeah. Business would be a good title. Yeah. yeah. I know. That's why I'm just using it right now yeah. as a placeholder yeah. on here to get you comfortable Strickland with the idea. Strickland Business. Yeah. I'm good with that. All right. Thanks, Zach. <laughs> All right, dude. Hey, speaking that of. That is what is happening. So I shared it with you over the weekend. It's only on Spotify and some other podcast players now. I'm not widely yeah. promoting because it's not on Apple Podcasts. I, I so don't go there, but there's if you go to Freight, if you look up Freightcast on Spotify and on Twitter at Freightcast, we now have all of our podcasts because we're making so many now on one singular feed. So you can just follow that and you will get shows like What the Truck. For freight sake, freight waves insiders, fuller speed ahead, freight waves live it's and events freight podcast. Casters. No, just freight Fre- cast. Oh, freight cast. Yeah, freight cast. Yes. Yeah, it makes sense. Sorry, Hello, Carl. Hey, how you doing? Hey. It's time Good, to uh, kind of put on the cans. Yeah, throw yeah. these on. Okay. When you're doing that, we'll hit our bumper. Chad, it's time we get off the blockchain. The blockchain. The blockchain. The blockchain. <laughs> Let's make it digital. Let's make it digital. Yeah. Time to get digital. Time, Time to, get to get digital, digital with Kari. This is when we talk about tech and tech developments in the supply chain, and today we're going to be talking about DoorDash. Yes. Great to have you on, Kari. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Well, so what do you what do you cover for us at Freightwaves? Well, um, I've only been here a couple of months. Yeah. And I've been covering. On-demand mobility, um, and also okay. food delivery, grocery delivery, um, but also kind of whatever else they throw at me. Sorry, where do you so, come from? Times. Where, where, um, where did you join us from, and, and where did you did you transplant here? No, well, I did five years ago. Oh, okay. I was teaching high school English. Mm. Um, oh wow, a, a woman for your heart. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's, well, he's a PhD. He's Doctor Chad Brewer. Did you know that? No, she, uh, she's. I think. Didn't you get your MFA in, mm-hmm. in creative writing? Did yeah, you teach so, him? He's instruct. He's like instructed some of the people who work here. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, did did she teach me? <laughs> no, did you teach uh, her? <laughs> Haven't you I, been a teacher? I did not. I, I, don't I don't know. know. Like, did you teach Jonathan Smith? Wasn't he in your I class? I did, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and not very well. Yeah. As well, you if can... you wanted to skip class and stay home, you might use something like DoorDash, right? <laughs> now, yes. Good transition. In 2011, I used to use Grubhub all the time. And that's when Grubhub was a little bit different because... The participants in that were like the stores themselves. It wasn't like a third party who went around and picked all that stuff up for you. It would just be so there were a lot less people on there. And then like the game like has completely radically changed since 2011. Yes. Um, so recently in the news, I guess it's um, in the news a couple weeks ago. It's not that recent, but uh, DoorDash has opened a ghost kitchen Ooh. in California. Oh, good, our Halloween edition ghost kitchen. And ghost Close. kitchens aren't new per se, but this one's different in that it has a kind of a storefront oh. appeal. Um, usually the, the ghost kitchens were kind of in a back of a warehouse and weren't kind of... And, and truly were kind of anonymous, like yeah. a ghost writer. Exactly, exactly. So this one is in uh, Redwood, right? yeah, Redwood, California, hmm. um, in the Palo Alto area. And there are five restaurants uh, operating in that kitchen. Yeah. Um, and you can pick up or have it delivered. Um do people go in and eat there, or they all they do is no. they make just food? a kitchen? Yeah, just a kitchen, and it's DoorDash employees who will mm. come out and deliver the food for, to your car, or um, obviously deliver it to you. But I guess what's interesting here is these um, kind of mid-market, fast casual dining uh, restaurants are choosing to to do that as opposed to have kind of their own storefront dine-in experience. Um, because there's lower risk, there's lower r- rent. Right. Um, and so I guess it's going to make, you know, that segment of the um, industry like a, a little nervous. They're like optimizing the dining format, I guess, because these restaurants are built for that economy, right? Because mm-hmm. they don't, so, and it said like they pair very easily. It was like the Holla Guys, Nation's Giant Hamburgers, Roosters and Rice, and, and Humphrey's Slow Come, which is, um, I, I think, an ice cream place. Yeah. Or is it Slow Come, is that right? I don't know. Uh, These are regional to the West. So I think, it's, I think it's, so. So the advantage to the suppliers, the the people making the food, is that they, they, as you said, it's not as high rent, right? And it's and they and they don't have to maybe maybe their insurance, some other things are lower. 
Um, it, it's also it's it's sort of almost like that that middle of the like warehouse is becoming more uh, like all over the place to to help with last mile delivery. Only mm. this is this. I mean, it's it's interesting. It's they're yeah. trying to differentiate themselves. DoorDash is with this. Oh, well, isn't it? like all food last mile delivery kind of in its own way? If you think about it. I, I don't know. It could I don't know be. I mean, it's with like take, the last mile, out. you're bringing the food, right? Yeah, if you I mean, take the food from, you know, from the restaurant. Oh, is it all home. food? <laughs> yeah, in a sense, all food yeah, delivery. Yeah, except for the fact that I guess in those cases, they're simply restaurants. I like the guy in your article who was uh, the guy from Boston Chop yeah. somewhere. I've been many times out in Boston. They have great French onion soup there. But yeah. he said his... It, he was talking about this, and he was like, they were asking him, he thinks it's crazy that people spend, like, having a $100 meal delivered. They right. do it. But he's like, you know, you put it in the to-go containers, it really changes he a higher-end meal. Yeah. Especially chefs at that. Like, you don't right. work all your life to open a restaurant, be exactly. a chef there, and then throw and then have people eating their main meal out of a doggy bag. Right. Some yeah. high-end restaurants don't even give doggy bags. But he was saying that his largest competition, though, isn't that. He said it's, it's, it isn't other restaurants. It's actually Netflix and Netflix economy. So I guess he's saying it's these delivery guys and people just staying home and right. not going out at all. Yeah. That's the big I know. It's the culture. binge economy. It's the, you know, what can I get from sitting on my couch and doing nothing economy. Well, the, these, like, these optimized restaurants to DoorDash, too, they have zero delivery through the launch until the end of the year. So they're really trying to aggressively get people accustomed to just ordering straight out of there. Do you think that that is the future for this thing? Because it seems like it's going to be, it's tough to sustain this. I don't know. What do you mean with profit and all of Which Which, which yeah, part is, I, like, I having know. the ghost kitchen? Thing? I think it's just strange to me because, like, I I know that people, like, younger people order all the time from, like, DoorDash and everything. But I'm like, I don't want to spend $8 having something delivered. Well, see, that's my question. Apparently, it's 25 to 34-year-olds mm -hmm. doing this. And yeah. so that's not in my demographic. And I, know. I don't do it. And I'm wondering well, if maybe I'm, I should. I'm in that demographic. And yeah. I don't a lot. But I think, I think it's geared towards people in high like dense urban environments yeah uh, because the logistics of going out to eat you know yeah, of, of yes. getting public transport or whatever i think that i mean i could be wrong but that's what it seems like to me that a lot of these trends a lot of these kind of on-demand trends are are more focused on urban for these dense population. Yeah. yeah but I don't know. Who's the leader in that space? Is it like, like I mentioned Grubhub? They've been around for over a decade, and they used to have this thing where you could like you could win like food. You could win like there was like pick the card. It was like they gamified it, but it's changed so much. And ever since I had kids, because it's expensive to like they don't eat their food when you buy it from anyway. So we like my wife and I we go to Walmart. And we just cook at home, like I mentioned. But um, yeah. when I was single, I, I, I used this stuff a lot more. And I imagine in my twenties I would more because you like hang over your hung over your on the couch. You don't want to go out. <laughs> And like get something to eat. But what do you? What do you? Uh, what do you pay? I literally don't know. Like, is it a twenty percent charge on top of the order, or like how does that work? Because you don't tip, right? Oh, my I think you do. You, maybe you, you don't do. tip. Well, no, I do you tip your Uber driver? My underst of course. Oh, they were saying like ninety nine percent of people don't tip their Uber driver. I don't always take my, tip my Uber. Driver. Oh, mm, shame, shame. All right. Um. Well, I. I do you guys tip do, your Uber driver? Hey, that LinkedIn. It used to be. Know. Well, that used to be like Uber's thing. It would be like you don't have to tip. Like, not right. only is it, like, way more convenient than a taxi, but they, like, own, basically like, market it as not having to tip. Oh, no. <laughs> but then they sort of, you know, send you the... the you oh, know, now they shamed everybody. Yeah, they shame yeah. you after you Like an email. Yeah, and they do, and they're like, do you... And they show you his face and everything, and... Like, what would you rate him? Or, yeah. You know, do you have any comments? Yeah. So, like, but yeah. I, so you guys haven't answered my question. How do you know, you know, do you know how much it is to, to, to have a DoorDash? Should we order delivery? something? Maybe next time, like at the start of the show, I we should it's... order something on DoorDash and see if it arrives. In That's time. a good idea. Like when I get That's Domino's, no matter kind of what they bring me, I just, I'll get five bucks. There's five bucks. You but there's also Domino's? a delivery fee oh, added on. Oh. Right. You're paying the base, you know, what you would pay for the pizza. Plus you're paying the, you know, the service cost of delivering. Yeah. Plus a tip, right? Yeah. But like you're paying for the convenience, but. I know that DoorDash, um, like right this week for Halloween, I just saw a headline that they're t uh, teaming up with Cheesecake Factory for some kind of promotional deal. So they're always doing some sort of giveaway promotional deal with it for their customers. So. Cheesecake Factory is like the place you want to go when you don't know what to eat and you <laughs> don't, you know, you just want like it to be like mediocre and have a lot of choice. Right? <laughs> Pretty much. I don't know. I've never <laughs> been. but you, uh... you get dressed up and go there on dates with your wife, right? Oh, all the time. <laughs> no, what was the restaurant in town that, that you said that um, Nick said he got dressed up to go to? What was that? Oh, yeah, it was Jay Alexander. Oh, okay, yeah. Right? He yeah. got dressed to the nines to go to Jay Alexander. 
We're like, you must have stood out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Next time, like, you get like DoorDash. I wonder if they do DoorDash. And I wonder if the chef at JX Zoners gets offended but if people DoorDash. I think they wanted to dress up. That yeah. was kind of the point. But I guess they could have dressed up and stayed at home. Anyway, yeah, Kari. How do, how do, Kari, how do people learn more? About How you. do people learn more or about read your articles? Find out more uh, about you know, freightwaves.com. They can go to the last mile um, kind of tag on freightwaves.com, and a lot of my articles are there. Okay. So, so you know yeah. the song Last Fantastic. Mile by Cinderella? Chad does. Oh, yeah. It's a, it's a good one. <laughs> yeah. We'd use it if we could. <laughs> we could, we just can't license it. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining us. Well, we'll thank play you. it for you. Yeah. Great. Great. Okay. Off the air. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> thank you, Kari White. Thank you. Fantastic. And it is about that got time. Got a nice metal thing, too. I, I got one of these, too. Did you know there's something called, like, an RSVS girl or something? I don't, it's like a style trend for, like, 14-year-olds. No, never yeah, I didn't either. I was reading about it, though, because, like, I always, I always try to just keep up with the culture because I think it's a big deal. Well, where is, speaking of big deals, where is big deal Emily Zink? Oh, here she, she comes. She's coming. And if she knows, like, I, I got her a special present, too. Oh, big deal or little deal, go, Emily? I, when I went to Walmart, I got a 12-pack of these, and I brought an extra one just for you because I knew that today wow, was your it's a segment big deal. on the show. Wow, this yes. is a very big deal. Of course it's a big deal. We should get a sponsorship. I'm just saying. With uh, Well, we won't say their name. We won't D say their DDP. name. DDP. I got to cover this up. Sip of it for the work. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys were talking about Uber. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that now you had to tip your driver because you know how it always pops up after yeah. if you want to give one, three, five, whatever. Oh, yeah. You don't have to. I didn't know you could exit out of that. I always oh, you tip, think he comes I, back? Yes. Like, if you don't tip him, he'll come yeah. back to you? <laughs> <laughs> like he'll... You cannot get out of the car. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know that. So very interesting. But I always tip because I they, they're making less and less money. Like, you were talking yeah. about DoorDash, too. They make nothing. I don't see, I don't see, I don't see how they it works. Money. They're, they're, no. I mean, all of those miles are on their own cars. Yeah. I know. You a lot know? of people are saying that. And a lot of them don't get, like, the appropriate insurance. So you yeah. also have to be careful as a passenger. Yes. In, and, but nobody cares. Like, when it first started, you had to take your car somewhere and get it checked. And oh, they yeah. did, like, a full-on wow. insurance yeah. check. I don't think it's. But you know, no. I kind of like things. And now that they've their, gotten like grungier, the cars, the, but for I, sure. I, see, I like things in their infancy like this because it's kind of like the Wild West and there's not as many rules. But that's it's true. infancy, though. Like, like, Uber's been around since it was it started. It's, like, it's early innings, I'm going to say. I guess. Yeah. I feel like it's too developed now because now it smells like food in all the cars because of yeah, they do both. Uber Eats. I know. It like ruined the game. <laughs> oh, well. There was a time when everybody had like water bottles and mints and like magazines and they'd be like, I have a jack for you if you want to yeah, plug in exactly. your phone. Exactly. I like, thought it was cool when I got into one of those cars yeah. and it was like pimped out in the back and you had your lotion, you had everything. Know, and it was wow. like, wow. Creepy. Like, wow. Not How lotion. Uber that was driving like a Lincoln Town to car, you know? <laughs> you know what I mean. Oh, it's, it's mints. kind of creepy. Oh, mints. Oh. No, Chargers. remember how um, the, the internet, there was that like sweet little spot of the internet where like you, you was Napster and you were getting the free yeah. music. Yeah, and then, yeah. Now it's say. just like they're just stealing our data. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. It's every, oh, now it's all, they're stealing all, back. Yeah. It's all controlled. They're taking it back. It's yeah, all it. a big deal. That's you used to get I viruses like. too. Like I, I got quite a few computers ruined. Well, yes, because That's of Napster. The Kazaz and the Morpheus yes. and the Napster. Well, level. who won last week? Oh, it was probably me. So probably you. Do you go first then, Dooner? Every week. Oh, I don't know. This Does is the loser maybe. go first then? It's up to you. It's I, fine. Either way. Oh, I think. Uh, I'll uh, take the first one. I think I went I'll first go. last time. Okay. Okay. So, Dooner. All right. Locust Robotics is sending mm. more than 500 robots to warehouses this holiday season to help warehouse workers during peak shopping season. Mm. Is it a big deal or a little deal? You know, you, you said you like things in the early innings, Chad. This is the early innings of the robot apocalypse. Oh. Look at these. And they're already being subjugated. They're and already I'm getting these like, part-time robot jobs. What are these robots supposed to do when, I guess, they'll have to drive Ubers? I mean, they're, Maybe. Not, they're not in the warehouse. Well, they won't be able to because we'll have autonomous cars. I mean, they're not driving yes. anything. But it's... aren't they the robot? They can put their own consciousness, their robot consciousness. I don't know. It's a... It's a big deal in the sense that it's just a, it's a tipping point. So uh, there'll be a lot more. But five hundred is like nothing. That's right. Uh, <laughs> so what do you think, Chad? Uh, well, it's a little deal because it's such a few amount of robots. Uh, I mean, I think it's it's cool. Like there's the cyclical nature of 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 shipping and trucking, right? We've um, we're on a very and so it's the retail season. They're uh, boosting their their help and without having to pay people, it's a big deal that it could be the beginning of the end for a lot of seasonal hiring. I Alex Cruci, he says oh, he, yeah. he just wanted to chime in on this Uber Lyft thing. Yeah. He said the downfall of them is the variable pricing charges. And uh, he said taxis are flat rates, so they can actually be cheaper during high volume times. You know, oh. um, I didn't even think 
think, you know, but they've had variable pricing for a long time. The one yeah. problem I always had with taxis, especially in Boston, is you never knew where they are. No. Like, they were. That, that and was, they the, would that steal was them. what I was about to say. Yeah, so you yeah. said that, especially in the winter, yeah. you just, like, stand out there, and, like, if someone, if someone flagged them that they thought was better, they might not even come. Yeah. Taxis, it's very analog. Yeah, you know it is. You're like running around the streets, just looking for one. <laughs> it is it's like waiting, <laughs> like a like a maniac. Uh, Interesting perspective. Well, I wonder where he lives. Yeah, let us know where you live because I want to know where he sees cheaper rates. That yeah. Chad, Austin, Texas-based centralized freight platform Shipwell raised thirty-five mm. million dollars of venture capital funding from a group of investors led by Georgian Partners based out of Toronto, Canada. Is yeah, this I, a big deal or a little deal? Oh, it's a big deal. I like these guys. I know Greg Price and Jason. Jason, I'm forgetting your last name. Oh, I'm very close on it. But I mm-hmm. like I like <laughs> you guys. Well-spoken, articulate, smart, interesting, uh, interesting business model. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy for them. Uh, $35 million, that'd be a big deal to me for my funding for, uh, for my startup. So oh, big. Yeah. Fat, hairy dinner. Yeah, they've done well. They've been through a Series A. They've been through uh, they've been through a seed round, a Series A. Now they've been through this round, and I think that they're growing. They're growing at a great rate. And you know, we saw that we met them, and I met them at Transparency Nineteen. I'm not sure if you'd met them beforehand. Yeah. I have actually one of their shirts. I think they did a great <laughs> job with their with their demo. So and we're fanboys. Well, I'm just saying they they do a nice job, and I think it's a yeah. big deal because I think that when we look at like things like the Freight Tech 100 in these awards, there's some companies that's not this year necessarily, but in the past, there a lot of freight tech companies, especially in 2018, that all seem to be offering very, very similar solutions. It's great for them that their load board is um, is, is continuing to grow. So, yeah, big yeah. deal. There we go. Both of you. Right. Big they're, deal. they're getting ahead in the pack. You guys are agreeing a lot during this one. All right. Well, I'll try to just I'll try to be <laughs> the devil's agree. advocate. No. Next one for you, Dooner. According to a new study, half of procurement organizations still use Excel to analyze data. <laughs> what? Those laggards. I mean, we They're just talked about fighting the good fight, right? I mean, I don't think those companies you're going to find in the Freight Tech 100 or the Freight Tech 25. You know, and, and anyone, we, we promoted it so many times. Anybody can nominate themselves. And now there's people complaining, like, why wasn't I in there? And we know who nominated themselves and who didn't. And, and we there, there's banged, no nomination. And we banged that cowbell telling them to nominate <laughs> you themselves. You did. I know. And what did I say? What did I say? Over if you're a marketing over. guy, I told you to fire that marketing guy. I told you to fire him if he didn't submit your company. So, so if you're sitting there and you're like, why aren't we on there? Go down to your marketing department right now. I'm on fire. It's almost Christmas, right? You can't fire somebody before hell. <laughs> but actually, can you? I don't know. Before you Thanksgiving, can. you can fire uh, people. Don't fire work. anybody. Don't. But like next time, if you know you have a marketing guy who's like kind of incompetent, just fill out the form yourself. Yeah. Right. <laughs> no. Yeah. Do it. the like work and tell but them, the, hey, promote the Excel this. thing. Wow. So the Excel thing. I mean, so it's, when I worked, it's kind of funny. I mean, when I worked for, I'm not surprised at all, and I think that maybe 50 percent is better than what it used to be. That's like a positive sign because when I was at a morning company. We would receive almost all the data that was sent to us in all states of disrepair that was almost always on Excel files. So yeah, I and would say like ninety percent came Excel files. And for some people, Excel is is still Greek to them. You know, they're not used to it. So Excel it does a lot of mathematical things. Yeah. So. Oh, I thought you meant like the, like the Greeks. <laughs> <laughs> they're good at math and philosophy. Um, yeah. um, no, so um, for my, I think it's a um, it's a little deal. You know, it's an it's an anal- yeah. it's an analog deal. Okay. All right. Yeah. This is a sad story. A lot of people yeah. were talking about this. Police in the UK have charged a truck driver with manslaughter after they discovered 39 bodies in his trailer. Uh, big deal, little uh, deal. Big deal. Yeah. So sad. I mean, well, that's a just a massive, it's hard to even wrap your mind around yeah. that. You know, some of the biggest tragedies that have ever happened in our nation um, ha- have been just a few people killed. So, I mean, 39 is... Is uh, is a very big deal. Um, I, I I'm not sure uh, all the details of the story um, or who the, who who the folks were, but um, sorry to the to the victims and their families. Well, I think the the part where it like a lot of times it's it's easy to be disassociative when you read these these articles, yeah. and it's over in I believe Ireland. But I was reading in the article I read today, they were talking about how how they found out that it wasn't Chinese nationals, it was Vietnamese, and a lot of people were. We're looking for their loved ones. Like these weren't these weren't oh. people who nobody cared about and were starting to show. These were people who were looking for a better life. And they talked to someone over in, in Vietnam who's familiar with this this type of traffic. And he's like, things are so bad in the part where we're from that people don't care if they're risking their life. It's really scary to hear that they're in a reefer trailer because you can get a lot of CO two buildup in there. It seems like a terrible place. 
it seems like it'd be very easy to die. But but for like truckers too, you have to wonder. I mean, this guy was involved in the scheme, uh, or at least he's being charged. Allegedly yeah. was involved in the scheme. There are a lot of truckers who sort of came to his defense and were like, well, he probably didn't know. In the case that he didn't know, I, it does make me wonder, because if you can't crack the seal, how do you even know what you're pulling behind you? You know, so that's got to be kind of scary yeah. for a trucker. And, you know, I was talking to Kyle about this last week, but it's not like your bill of lading is going to say dead bodies or oh, human trafficking no. on it. You, it would probably say something like sacks of flour yeah. or fish or something but uh, so what led to like what did he just get to the arrival and then they open it up and they're dead or did he do something where he left it for i, I don't know, know if there's this thing because they've they've arrested five people in connection yeah. with with this now so i don't know if they they knew to intercept him or how it all came down yeah i didn't read too deep into it but yeah he could have maybe not known but it is manslaughter charges uh sometimes different than homicide carries less life in jail or less of a life chance of a life sentence, but I don't know how they do it in yeah. the UK. So yeah, I'll have to look into that. This one is just crazy <laughs> to me. I kept reading this story. Yeah. Like, this was this? bizarre on so many levels, including the way it was written. And this, yeah. An online petition is calling for an extreme haunted house in Summertown, Tennessee to close. But Cammie Manor makes participants sign a waiver. <laughs> the extreme experience could last 40 up page to 40 pages. Uh, yes. It could last up to 10 hours. And that waiver in the 40 page says participants agree to things like being shocked, submerged in water, and they may even have some unwanted dental work done. That's where I was out. I was like, you know, I, I don't even like going <laughs> to to begin with. I could take being slapped. The and... owner himself says he doesn't even go in his own haunted house. So what do you think about this petition? Big deal, little deal. The creepiest thing about this, the creepiest thing about the story that I found was that you don't even have to, like, they get, if you make pay. it to the end, and no one's done it, but, like, which is also weird. No but one's like, made it to the end? No one's made it to the end. I didn't read that part. But you can, supposedly you can get thousands of dollars in this thing that nobody can pass. But you don't pay to go to it. You just get dog food. So these people don't even make any money They pay running with dog this. Food. Yeah. Give them a bag so, of dog food. I was watching, there's, so there's, they're sadistic. I was watching they're, this movie on Shudder called Haunt, and it was about like Extreme Haunted House. And I'm like, who wouldn't leave this place? But apparently there's people who go to this. They sign the waiver. There was In the story, there was a lady who like was reported kidnapped. They found her in the basement. Well, this is the like, thing that's bizarre about Gagged and tied up and like they weren't charged so maybe she didn't press charge. It's just this is, She signed the waiver. That's what I mean. Like that la the last sent couple of sentences it said last year last year a woman was reported as having been kidnapped. Police found her in the basement of this house tied up and beaten and yeah. shivering. But she signed the waiver to let it happen. But you can't, just because you sign a waiver, you can't. I mean, can you? you can't. Like, you can. If, if it's, it's a legal yes. document, if it was drafted, she said yes to it. And I know, but so. at some point, isn't it like abuse and capture? Wow. So, okay, I mean, they're closing yeah. it and thousands are... are well, they're are, not closing it. There's a petition to close oh. it. A petition to close it. Yeah. It's Should only we go, 9, Chad? Should we go signatures? just for the show? Should we all go like the Scooby Doo gang? I'll bring a camera. I'll take the GoPro. Just, just to see if we can make it through. I really think you should. But the unwanted dental work. Yeah, no. Yeah, uh -uh. I don't know about that. Uh-uh. Well. I don't know. <laughs> so, I mean, but it's a little deal because no one's even passed it yet. Yeah, it's only 9,000 signatures, so get on there and sign yeah. it if you want. Oh, and if not, it's a little, keep it going. It's a little deal. So. I mean, It'd be a big deal if it was a real haunted Have house. Have you been to an extreme haunted house? No, I, I mean, I, I don't, don't know, like, like anything what, where people touch me. Yeah, uh, like, uh, yeah, no. I, I mean, define extreme. I think they it's don't where like. Where they touch yeah. you and like chase you with chainsaws and like real chainsaws. Yeah. It's like kind of dangerous. I don't dangerous. trust those people. It's dark. Know. Someone could trip. I could lose a limb. No, thank you. Yeah, that's got to attract a certain type. Yeah. yeah. I like my limbs. <laughs> <laughs> so big deal or little deal? Two hikers are rescued after getting <laughs> lost on Lookout Mountain wow. last night. This is. I think they were just on a date. This is a big deal <laughs> only in how pathetic it is. Oh. Aww. Yes, so <laughs> pathetic. I've hiked up there around Craven's house, speaking of haunted houses. Oh. And, is that uh, scary? And, it's oh, it's so it's so creepy up there. Oh, is there's it? There's all these. There was all the, there was all this fighting up there. There's there's all this death, uh, in the Civil War. Oh, well, this yeah. is a long time ago. <laughs> I thought you meant like now, like recently. No, I mean that's why it's haunted. We were both looking like, oh, gee. No, that's why it's haunted. <laughs> I'm like, well, oh, maybe this is a big deal. They went anyway, to like a really scary they, area. They they went to this area where there's like trails all over the place. And you would think that they could find their way out. Yeah. Like, like and, I mean, people went in in the dark and found them. I mean, 
it's just silly and sad. And we, there's it was scant on detail. <laughs> I think they were on a date. They'll always remember this. <laughs> yeah. This is a huge deal. This, I mean, the woods is so going to be a scary place. Expe- oh, it's a little deal. Never mind. Oh. <laughs> it's a little deal. Oh, Jesus, how do you like? It said right in the article that they found him with their GPS location. Why didn't they open up? Go- Do they not know that you don't have to be in a car to open Google Maps? And they could have just like followed their little red dot out of there. I know it's I've a big deal for how pathetic it is. I can't believe it, and they're only there for a couple hours. It's just like unbelievable. How are you? You're not I, even lost if you're on a hike, and you like you have to be like gone for like. This at, made I the would, news. I Twelve hours or twenty-four this hours. This isn't news. I wouldn't have called nine one one because this is what happens. You end up on one of the truck. I know. Like, right. I would have kept walking and walk. Like you have flashlights if their phones still work to call nine one one and curl up and get a get a night's sleep and then yeah. walk out in the morning. I don't I know. know. It's like I the Blair Witch Project Maybe. or something. Like oh, I'm seeing sticks well, or something. See, Maybe there's more to the story. There's always so. more to the story. The ghosts of the Civil War. There saw. Yeah, there, there was a lot, lot happening up there. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> so, I don't. So you thought it was a big deal, though? Oh, yes. just because of how stupid it was. Yes. Oh, okay, and I thought it was a little deal because of how stupid it was. Well, Weird. just to show just you, just different well, perspective. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go drink this. And All right, All right. thanks, have a, have big a nice deal. Drink. Thank you guys. Yeah. Thanks, He's Emily. <laughs> Let's plug some stuff. Oh, do you have anything to plug though before you go? What's coming out this week on Freight Waves TV? Well, of course, another episode of Off the Supply Chain. Mm. This time, it's a fun episode, Warehouse Boom. You guys were talking about the oh, warehouses. Is that, is oh, that I'm on that, aren't I? I? Oh, no, I it's lied. In, I it's thought, infrastructure. That's right. <laughs> okay, I'm not on it. Yeah, no, so it's... um. That's next next Friday. This okay. Friday is it still infrastructure, is a great which episode. is a big yeah. deal all yeah. the time. Just it, even in terms of right now, uh, one of the questions deals with the wildfires out in California, and they're mm. continuing yeah. to happen, and yeah. just the infrastructure is not in place for a lot of those electric companies to prevent these fires from happening and that's kind of why they sparked again so there's so like a it's civil war late. era uh winery that burned down in that sonoma county area yes. where a lot of those fires are going in just yesterday it is the video is just hard to watch and did you see the video with the doorbell um there's a family who obviously they a lot of those people who live in that area always have their bags packed just in case something was to happen and you see on their ring doorbell wow. the video doorbell like a bug out bag it's yeah basically basically off in the distance is the backyard is burning and uh-huh. they're running out the front door with their suitcases so they're escaping the fire yeah wow so yeah so that is kind it of does. timely our infrastructure episode is very timely and yeah you're going to chicago going today. to chicago yeah. to yeah. finish filming for our very first show yes. i mean our, our very first pilot episode yeah. of this new show uh inside the box yeah uh really pretty excited about this it's, yeah. it's a lot to do but um, can't wait to uh, produce this thing, get it going, going to the Windy City. You're going to yeah. get another uh, deep dish when you're out there? Um, I think I've had my fill. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah I've had my fill. You know why they call it the Windy City? Because of the Yeah, politicians. I did not know this. Because the politicians. No, I mean, it's windy. No, it's, it's not nearly as windy as Boston. <laughs> Boston is like wicked windy. <laughs> you don't know that. They it is out. kind of windy. Yeah, I guess. Okay. A little bit. But that's not why they call it. Yeah. All right, all right. Okay, um, well, so, you'll let us all know when yeah. that comes out, and that will be out pretty soon. And we got... New lights. One of my guys, Cody, oh, yeah. stayed big this deal. weekend with John Bowes and Jonathan mm. Smith came in. And so that's a big deal. They yeah. spent a lot of their time rigging the lights, so you'll see that. It's, we're still kind of working out the kinks. It was some people complained about the glare on Freight Waves now today, so we apologize. Oh. It will be fixed tomorrow. We're just working out the kinks of everything. So we've got a lot of stuff in the works. We're doing a lot right now. Yeah, so. and we don't yeah. want to announce everything because November no. 12th and 13th at that's- Freight Waves Live, that's kind of when we open the Pandora's box of all the amazing things we've been working on. Go to FreightWaves.com, click on events, get your tickets now. You saw the commercial before the show even aired. Chad and I were in front of the Sears Tower. <laughs> the Sears Tower. Or was it? <laughs> or or was you? it? It was yeah. just for Halloween. It was, it was the, uh, no, it was the Hancock. There's also yeah. a John Hancock building I've in Boston. Been, yeah, I've been enjoying getting uh, re-familiarized with Chicago. Yeah. It's a, gr- it's a great city. Speaking of podcasts, there'll be a new FreightWaves Live and Events podcast. It is the one with David Rowan from Wired. Craig Fuller, I talked to him at the beginning of it. We talked about what makes a great keynote and how... Freightwaves goes and sources them. Some of the keynotes at Freightwaves Live are going to be Ben Mensrick. He wrote the book "Bringing Down the House." Yeah, that, uh, it became. I think it became the movie Twenty One. Yes. Love he, that movie. He also wrote uh, the what's social it called? Network. Accidental Billionaires. Yeah. Well, the Accidental the Billionaires story. Facebook that became the Social Network. Yeah. So he writes and Craig in on. I don't want to give a spoiler, but on Freightwaves Live, he talks about he likes storytellers a lot. And Ben Mensrick writes in a very storytelling fashion that makes it easy to turn those into screenplays. Yes. Howard Green, another author, author of Railroader, and uh, we have one more. Wolf of Wall Street. Wolf of, how could I forget? Wolf of Wall Street. Jordan Belfort. Yes. Yeah. 
So Amazing be good. Lots of keynotes and all kinds of other speakers. Not to mention the it's Freight Tech. Be fun. The winner, the, the Freight Tech, not only is the Freight Tech 25 announced, but the yeah. winner is announced. And we have, we're talking about all sorts of great ideas and what to do for, uh, for that reveal. Yeah. Everyone's working very hard. There's a lot of great things. We can't wait to show you all. And I believe there'll be uh, several live streams, right? There'll be a live stage live stream that if you like Chad and I and you may, if you're watching this show, we're going to be working very hard that day. We'll be uh, we'll be emceeing yeah, the stage. Tuesday and Wednesday. Yeah, It'll there'll be, be uh, some Great Waves you can TV. Catch. It'll be awesome. We'll be stuff. live on air. Can't yeah. wait. Show Let me all get the goods. back to my TV yeah. duties now. Thank yes. you, guys. Enjoy Thank you. that Dr. Pepper oh, in peace. I will. Yes. Oh. So I mentioned a couple of podcasts. Jay. I mentioned For Freight's Sake. That's Craig Fuller and John Bradford. They talk about venture capital, the intersection of freight. I talked about Freightways Live and Events Podcast. A new Fuller Speed came out today with the CEO and president of PAM, Dan Cushman. What the truck, obviously. All of these things are on yeah. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and everywhere podcasts can be heard. But because there's so many shows and there's even more coming, we decided that we should also make a master feed, a consolidated feed. So if you don't want to have to follow 12 to 30 different podcasts for Freightways, you can go and look up Freightcasts on Spotify, at Freightcasts on Twitter. That's, and it sounds just like it is Freightcast, like podcast with freight in yeah, front of it. I've been there, signed up. It's uh, been submitted to Apple. It'll be on Apple soon. So if you go there, don't go to Apple just yet. You won't be able to sign up. But, um, you know, it's worth telling you guys about. It's on so Spotify. It is right? on Spotify. Yeah. Spotify is great That's where for podcasts. Spotify, you can, you can get on there instantly. Apple Podcasts takes a little bit longer to develop those stuff. I've been enjoying, I've been enjoying listening to podcasts on Spotify too. It's a kind of a developing thing that they've got going on. Yeah. You've got a flight to catch, but you can yeah, find him more on him. Uh, at Chad Prevost on Twitter. I'm at Timothy Dooner. That's D O O N E R. Yeah. Let's get this music cracking. All right. Hey, oh. shout out to Chicago. I'm coming Little for Cowbell you. From Chicago. Look out for uh, Carrie White or uh, Kari White. Kari White. Kari White for her She's first She's in segment. transportation. Her name's Kari. Yeah. That, oh, there. That's how I remember that. Thanks yeah. for the pneumatic. Uh, Zach Strickland with the first ever uh, Strickland Visbit. And shout out Emily Zink. Big deal. We're coming on. who wrote in these great questions and, and gave us the feedback. It's really fun to interact with you guys. So always keep them coming if you catch us on the live stream. It's great stuff. So look out yeah. for all the people listening on their podcast Thanks player. for helping to make us in the here. top 20% of podcast downloads. See you Friday.